Hi, we are from Group 1-7, and now we want to present about our integrated project. This integrated project includes three courses which are Reaction Engineering 1, Process Modeling and Simulation, and the Separation Process 2. Thus, we need to use the knowledge from those three courses to design new biogas plant with POM as feedstock, which consists of reaction processes to convert POM into biogas and downstream separation to increase the quality of the biogas. Hello and Assalamualaikum, my name is Awada and I will present the case study under Reaction Engineering course which is Design of Reaction Process System for the Conversion of Palm Oil Mill Effluent into Biogas. Palm oil mill effluent, pronounced as POM, is a type of waste from palm oil that can be used as one of the feedstocks to produce biogas. Biogas is produced as a clean renewable source for energy production. A treatment process that is commonly used to convert POM to biogas is anaerobic digestion process, which is a biodegradation process of complex organic matters under the absence of oxygen. The objective of this case study are to propose the optimum reaction system for POM conversion to biogas and strategy to maximize biogas yield which is methane yield. The treatment process applied for the proposed reaction system is anaerobic digestion that takes place in two CSTR arranged in series. The system will operate at temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, pressure 1 atm, 85% conversion, hydraulic retention time of 3 days for reactor 1 and 15 days for reactor 2, and lastly pH at 6.9. Anaerobic digestion consists of four stages namely hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis and methanogenesis. In reactor 1, only acidogenesis will take place since hydrolysis is neglected. Meanwhile, in reactor 2, only acetogenesis and methanogenesis will take place. The overall reaction in CSTR1 is obtained by combining two acidogenesis reactions. And the overall reaction in CSTR2 is obtained by combining two reactions from acetogenesis and two reactions from methanogenesis. Reactor sizing is determined by using the optimum hydraulic retention time and multiply it with volumetric flow rate in each reactor. The calculated volume for CSTR1 is 281.484 m3 and the volume in CSTR2 is 1407.456 m3. The overall yield of methane calculated is 0.26 which means that 0.26 mole of methane is produced by 1 mole of glucose. The strategy to maximize methane yield proposed are by adding pretreatment process before CSTR1 such as acidified pome through dark fermentation and by recycling the outlet stream for CSTR2 that contains acetic acid which is a reactant for methane production. Hello everyone, so I'm Sharon from Group 7. So today I'm going to present one of the main topics in our integrated project that is process modeling and simulation. In this part, after the simulation has been conducted, the team will further compare the parameters between the value in manual calculation that is obtained from reaction engineering 1 and the value from the simulation to determine the deviation error of the parameters. Then, further observation is conducted toward the effect of different pressure, temperature and feed mass flow rate to perform the reactor by using case of study function in Epson. The objective of process modeling and simulation is to develop the model that enable the determination of species concentration and mass balance inside the CSTR reactor. There are few assumptions that we consider in our manual calculation that is the simulation process run under steady state condition. Second, assume the value inside the reactor tank remain constant. Third, assume the cross-sectional area throughout the reactor remain constant. Fourth, it is a well-insulated reactor which is indicate no it is lost to surrounding or environment. Fourth, the reactor contents are perfectly mixed and do not exhibit signification gradient of parameters in any part of the reactor. The last one, the heat removed from the reaction efficiently to maintain the temperature inside the reactor. This is the mathematical model for our project. So in our project, we use CSTR as a reactor. Now, I'm going to talk about the mass balance in our integrated project. The overall mass balance is equal to dH1 over dT 
equal to 1 over P1 AC H1 bracket PO FO minus P1 F1 minus AC H1 times DP1 over DT. In this case, DT equals to the depression in time, P1 equal to the density of reaction mixture at outlet in CSTR1, AC is equal to the cross-sectional area, and the PO equal to the density of reaction mixture at the inlet of CSTR1. After conduct the mass balance for our reaction, we have to conduct component balance for each component. These are the component balance for each component. Hi, my name is Ivy and now I will explain about the simulation of the anaerobic digestion treatment process using the expand HISIS based on the parameter from the reaction engineering part. This simulation was done by using two CSTR arranged in series with a mixer in between. Before we start a simulation, we need to select the fluid package, component list, and the reaction. For the simulation of anaerobic digestion treatment process, we choose NRTL as the fluid package, and the component we include in this simulation are glucose, ethanol, carbon dioxide, acetic acid, methane, water, and hydrogen. For the reaction part, there are three reactions occur in the anaerobic digestion, which are acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and methanogenesis. For the simulation part, we will have two sets of reactions in which the first set includes the acidogenesis reaction and the second set includes the acetogenesis and the methanogenesis. The reaction set 1 which consists of two reactions will occur in the first CATR which is also known as R1 while the reaction set 2 which consists of four reactions will occur in the second CSTR which is known as R2. After we have done with the simulation property, we will proceed to the inlet fit property. Based on the research and the calculation at the reaction engineering part, the inlet pressure and the inlet temperature are 1 atm and 40 degrees Celsius relatively, while the mole flow rate for the inlet fit consists of 8.674 kmol per hour of glucose and 71.99 kmol per hour of water. For the value of reactor volume, we will take the result of the calculation that have been done in the reaction engineering part using the hydraulic retention time for both CATR in which the R1, the volume is 2 at 1.4 at meter cube and for R2, the volume is 1313.76 meter cube. The result obtained from the simulation was further compared with the parameter from the manual calculation that had been done in the reaction engineering part. The parameter we used to compare is the actual volume flow rate V0. By using the formula theoretical value minus the experimental value over the theoretical value times 100, we can get that the deviation error between the manual calculation and the simulation is 42.5%. After that, by using the case study function in expand HISIS, we are able to investigate and observe about the effect of the parameters such as the inlet pressure, inlet temperature, and the inlet flow rate toward the reactor performance. From the case study, we found that when the pressure increased, the conversion of the reactor will be decreased. Besides that, for the inlet temperature, we found that the conversion of the reactor will be decreased when the temperature increased. Last, for the inlet flow rate, we found that when the flow rate increased, the conversion will decrease. For the better understanding, the reason why the conversion reactor will decrease when these three parameters increase, you may refer to this few sentence. Therefore, we will deal with the conversion of reactor. We need to emphasize on these three parameters in order to get the maximum conversion value. Hi, my name is Norzafira Binti Rashid and I will present the case study under separation process two courses, which will cover the design of downstream separation process system for removal of contaminants from the raw biogas. For the introduction, biogas produce contains many impurities that must be removed before use. The impurities can cause a variety of problems on plant as well as human health. So the objective is to propose the most efficient separation techniques for the purification of biogas and to devise a strategy to maximize the production of purified gas. Next, for the proper separation techniques, you can see from the block diagram, firstly the feed will enter the absorption unit 1, 
to remove the water vapor and then it will enter the absorption unit 2 to remove the hydrogen sulfide and then it will enter the valve to decrease the pressure from 70 to 25 bar and then it will enter the membrane separator unit the acid will be the final product that we want to achieve in this process Lastly, the strategy to maximize the production of purified gas Firstly is to impregnate the activated carbon with alkaline solution Second is to increase the number of membrane modules Third is to use microporous hydrophobic membranes And lastly, to use multiple stage separative process This will help to increase the production of purified gas That's all from us. Thank you so much for listening.